The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. That's the chat from here on this Tuesday, the 20th of June. Gosh, the month seems to have flown by. Uh, we're looking at the Dow down. Oops, the wrong one. Let's go to the Dow right here. Yeah, there we are. Looking at the Dow down 233. Now, this is going to be really important. Why? Look, when you get a leg D, we're waiting, waiting, waiting for the chat wave to make a leg D. When you get that D, and then you immediately turn down sharply. First of all, the candle that I didn't type in, and I'll type it in now because I didn't, uh, I forgot to do that. Chapman Wave, Roman Candle. So there's a particular candle that I make, a, make it quite a, an important note of whenever it occurs. Um, if it's at the top, usually you will get it where there's a tiny wick at the top and then a sharp move down and then a long wick because halfway to three quarters of the way, the bounce up creates a candle. That looks like a Roman candle. When it's an inverted red Roman candle at the top, it has almost the same implication, but the uh, methodology is a little different in that. Let me just change the size here, make that a nine. There are. Um, in that, when it is upside down, in other words, a long wick and then the red, big red body halfway going to the top with a tiny little wick at the top, <clears throat> I can say if there is a rally, if there is a, a slide that goes halfway into the wick, for instance, this was a good one right here, and that's a, a small, but it's a Chapman Wave Roman candle nevertheless. <clears throat> if there's a move in a shorter time frame that goes halfway into the wick and holds for a certain period of time, be careful because it's, uh, it, it, there's a great, uh, chance, greater chance that it could just not only drop but actually touch the low that was made. Um, but if it closes above that two out of three sessions above the wick high, that's really positive. That's exactly what you saw here on the low of 25th of May uh, at 32,586 in the Dow. The inverse would be, and I didn't make a big deal about it because my feeling was that we were going to see some negative action. Not only that, the Chapman Wave, a uh, very low trend gauge on Friday, suggested that there should be, uh, the very next trading day, there should be a very weak Dow before it should go negative before it tries to rally and go positive, uh, but it should go negative. Well, we got that in the futures yesterday. The Dow uh, futures were down, uh, but we got the same thing today. Now, this is the issue. You see this nine period moving average above the 14? Way up, and it is at this time, it's at 34,022, and the black 14 period moving average is at 33,885. To get that green to slump and go down sharply and cross negative, you would have to see the down to 33,700, probably 33,600 level. Or it's time, or it's price, or it's both. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the reasons why I said, no, we won't go short just yet. We are still long, three times long the Dow. Whoops, I shouldn't say that because I think we just got taken out. Let me just double check. No, I don't think we did. I, I, I need to check. I want to talk apples to apples. Uh, I said that the stock. Yeah, no, we're still long. Um, and the, one of the reasons is to get that nine period. I, I see this all the time. This is one of the reasons why every every minute of the day that I'm around, I'll be I'll be looking or trading or looking at the the way the nine period moving average. And this is what I worked on last week while I while I was out of town. Um, how. What are the opportunities to get a two-click session? That's number one. And in other words, based mostly on the 10-minute chart, if you can get the low of the, of the morning 
can you get a two-click session that goes all the way to early afternoon, maybe two o'clock, but sometimes, as on Friday, it goes all the way to the close, or as on other days. So what I'm looking at here is, that, that, that was one study. But the other is, the nine-period moving average, look, it's green. Look what had to happen in this particular instance for this one, this 10-minute chart to go negative. Not only did you have to sh drop sharply, you really had to plummet. Yeah, and not, not only that, it took all the way for one, two, three, it took 30, 40 minutes. It took 40 minutes for, to, for it to turn negative. So that's what I'm looking at here, that there's a process that's involved. The, the greater the distance between the two moving averages, the longer the time and the greater the price takes to reverse that. So here we are. We haven't even touched the green line period moving average. I suspect that there are still buyers out there, and you're going to see a flurry of activity. You remember, late David White used to talk about um, used to talk about the uh, crossover in terms of the nine period moving average, but he used it in, in a very different way, where where you come down sharply, then you bounce, and then if you come back under it, that's usually very negative. I have a slightly different uh, way of looking at that, but I have the pattern that I call the dreaded H. I'm suspecting we're going to get some form of a U-shaped pattern, <clears throat> and then we'll full gap at some point this week, maybe, but we'll get above the close, uh, the lower Friday, which is 34,285. We're quite a distance, we're 300 points below that, and we'll get somewhere into this candle. And then we'll see what happens. And remember my rule here on the inverse Chapman Wave Roman Care, red Roman candle, there's an inverse one, is that I want to see two closes out of three sessions, doesn't matter what it is, this is the daily bars, underneath that low. And that'll say to me, okay, now you're going to start to see weakness occur in the nine period moving average. You haven't yet. Look, even the MACD, look at that distance between the high, uh, the nine period differential green and the red uh, 26 period exponential moving average. But the stochastic has gone down from the 90s to 87%, still very positive, but it is turning down. On balance volume, blue turned down sharply. Relative strength is still pretty good, around about 52%. So that's the daily. Weekly chart says we fulfilled everything we wanted. There's a left side, right side price time match from the 34,712 high peak B. Uh, way back in, uh, that was November, I believe. Let me just double check. No, it was December, the week of the 16th to the midpoint, the long-legged doji candle of the 17th of, um, week of the 17th of March at 31,429. And now we've run up and it went to the day, but it missed the price. It went perfectly in time, but it hasn't gone perfectly in price. So the high of 34,588 uh, uh, on Friday missed the 34,712 level. I don't think it's going to get there in this move right now. This is the choppy period that we're looking at. And yeah, you know, I probably should have started one short position in the position that we wanted and said, let's add a at a certain point because it's going to be a process and I suspect that the process is going to be one there whereby there's just one sudden spike to the upside that fails and that's the one that you really have to time perfectly. All right, so I spent a little time on the Dow. Why? Because that to me is so important. It is a leg D gone to a potential peak D today. Let's just go to the E-mini. We're on our way out for this particular break. We'll be right back. Dow is down. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So just let me talk about this very quickly. We're talking about uh, the 200-period moving average in the 10-minute chart of the E-mini. This is the September E-mini. Look at this. It touched it way back there, that PB minus. It failed at about just before 4 o'clock on, I think it was Friday. Was that Friday? On the 19th. What is that? The 19th? Yep, the 19th. And look what happened. It kept trying to get there, even though it made peak Ds. It couldn't get there, couldn't get there, couldn't get there. Went to an A and then a B minus right there at uh, 4.10 this morning a.m. And then it had a really nice move from this low of, uh, I think it was 32, yeah, 44, 32.00, round number low. It goes peak A, peak B, peak C, crosses positive, D, pulls back. Holds the nine period moving average. The nine period moving average never went negative in the 10 minute chart. Then it goes to an E and fails underneath. And I'd say it typed into the then 4444 to 4446. That's going to be very strong resistance. And uh, what we did was we ran all the way in this instance to 4445.00 around number. Uh, and now it's pulling back sharply. So that's the 10 minute point. I just wanted to show you that that 200 period moving average. And one of the things I'd like to look at is, see, this is early morning, five o'clock, six o'clock, you make some kind of a low, and then it rallies sharply. And that takes you to about the 8.39 o'clock time frame where the news is, you know, got this economic news and all that. Then there's the time from 10, uh, from from that moment until 10.20. So you've got your, your early, very early morning uh, action, mostly overseas, but early morning. Then you've got uh, kind of a consolidation going to 10.20 and at 10.20 exactly now, as we are at 10.20 uh, on the 20th of June, um, this is where you're going to start to see the real action come in. And that should take you to about between 12.30 and maybe 1.15, and then you get the afternoon session. And that's going to be very important. And I see it at this particular mo moment, um, the action from th uh, Thursday into Friday and then Sunday night into Monday in the futures. And then the action 
going into this afternoon is going to be really important. The deeper we go down, the less chance you get in this particular phase, this particular week, of going very much higher. Now, let me show you something that I, I, I in the video I did for my subscribers. Every weekend I do a video about 45 minutes to an hour, hour and five minutes, uh, just going over a whole bunch of things, the overview of the market, the different sectors, what they might be looking at, what I'm looking at, what I'd like to get, what I've missed, what I'd like to get on a pullback, etc. And what we're looking at here is that Yes, the Dow is making a peak D. I, I said that there was a real good chance that we'd make that peak D. There was a real good chance that the S&P, which has an alternate, uh, alternate count, G says C, could in fact hold quite nicely, have one spike that gets us close, that makes like a, a, a C1, C2, or maybe even a D. But we are getting really close in this particular phase to some kind of consolidation. But look at this, Caterpillar, which has an alternate count, went to a peak E. Um, but you've got PAVE, which is has all of those ingredients. This is the Global X U.S. Infrastructure Development uh, ETF. There's no other way I can count this. I've got this as a C, and that's the reason. It's one of the few reasons why I was looking at many reasons, but a couple of reasons that came in that said, you know, it's going to be rotational probably. We're going to be pulling back. And what's really important is how does uh, the area in the PAVE, which is the infrastructure, how does the SLX, which is the, uh, this is the VanEck Vector Steel ETF, I'm calling this a peak B, how does it consolidate? There's still residual strength. How does it unfold? How does, um, uh, there was one other stock I want to look at right now. Oh, Apple. <clears throat> Apple has an alternate account, G slash B, but look at Technically strong it is right now. It started to show signs of a little bit of wear and tear, but as we as we're looking at it right now, up seven cents at 184, 185, um, it's just holding fabulously. So that's the reason why I'm thinking that there's a there's a process that's going on. But now that the Dow's down 350, that is a bigger number. And one of the reasons is you've got Boeing. Which is heavily weighted in the Dow, which went to a peak D E double top. Wow, I love these double tops. It's just amazing. I thought I looked at it over the weekend. I guess I didn't. Look at this. The high of a week ago was on the 12th of June, 223.91. The high on Friday was 223.87. Four cents difference. I mean, I, I just don't know, I, I don't know how to explain this. Because if you go back to February, the week of the 17th of February of this year, 271.31 was the high. 271. Wait, wait, wait. I think I wrote that wrong. I mean, 221. I was going to say, no, that's impossible. 221. 30, 31. I mean, really, how does that happen? Look how close. Look at this. 221.31, and here we are at two, two, double topping at the 223.91 and 223.87. Uh, ah, I mean, that's just amazing, right? And here you are talking about months going from February to June. So it's it's fascinating that it happens, but it did make a leg C in the monthly chart, down really sharply, and that's part of the Dow at this particular point is starting to see the 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 diversion of instruments in the components between uh, the cyclicals, which Boeing is a cyclical, uh, and something like, uh, let's go to something like, uh, what kind of Amgen? Amgen. And Amgen is trading uh, down uh, just a little bit, 80 cents to 228.86. But uh, it's in the Dow. So you've got this diversion between, buy a farmer, give me a break. <laughs> you've got a, a cyclical. So the Dow industrials, forget that. So now what we're looking at is, this is a rotational correction because even when I'm looking at deer, deer is only down three at 404.74. This is a peak A, peak B, and a peak C if there's no new high today. There's no other way, and it should go with with a buy mode in place. 
it should, there's just absolutely no reason why I shouldn't go that one extra leg to give you that leg D and then we can pull back. And that's what I'm saying. I think this is a process <clears throat> and it might be a rotational process that in fact, the overall Dow, because it's already made a D, can start to fail. And some of these others, they linger and linger and they just manage to scrape to a new recovery high to get that leg D like pave, um, etc. All right, enough with that. Now what I wanted to show you is this. Just to do it real quickly, because I can't remember if I did, I did it during the opening segment of the of the uh, um, update to 10 o'clock. So the S&P is now down 40 at 43.70. Um, and if you're looking at the MACD, it's flattening a little bit, but it's still very strong. Stochastic still good at 90%. On balance volume has pulled back together with the price. If you're looking at the QQQ, NDX 100, trading down 330 at 364.62, with that 9 over the 14. With the MACD still pretty good. And it could be much bigger than the others. And look at the stochastic 90%. So this is a process. In a corrective phase, and that's Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, in, in the uh, Tiger YouTube, uh, Pat mentions that uh, the six ounce cans have become seven ounce cans. Now, I've been noticing that, for, uh, I've actually been talking about this for, for years and years and years, that we've been slowly watching 
the the half ounce become you know it gets shrunk down a little bit you know, a pound one pound becomes a little less than a pound and the price goes up actually so it's, it's a double whammy but we'll have to get used to that in the meantime back at the ranch down the s and is down 42. a couple of things i just wanted to mention here in passing was that <clears throat> someone had mentioned amazon um amazon you see this cluster formation with almost like an H pattern has made a G slash C. It could almost be a little double top here. <clears throat> In this particular instance, the MACD has turned down. The stochastic is still good at 81%, but it's starting to weaken. And the on-balance volume is weakened. But look at the relative strength. For the last week, as the price has been up near these recovery highs, the re this gray line right here, the relative strength has been weakening. So uh, in this particular instance, I would say that, yeah, if I, I think someone said they, they, they started a buy or nibbling on Amazon. Is that what I saw? Uh, <clears throat> I just say be a little careful in this particular phase right now. Because I think that the heavies are the ones that are going to come have a little bit of a pullback. At this point, I don't see anything more than a, a reasonable, you know, three percent, five percent even pullback. Uh, if you're looking at, I, I showed Apple. Let's see where Apple is now. Apple is now down 17 cents. You see, just a little reversal. It's got the pressure of the market. So even the winners are starting to focus now on the general market as some money's been taken off. I'm, my big concern here is that the XLF, I was worried about it um, over the weekend. And I said at the 200 period moving average, uh, that makes me a little in leg F. I'm not even, it says that it could be a chapel wave instant restart, but I said uh, I'm more inclined to keep this as an F right now. The MACD is good, stochastic's good. 87%, even with this pullback, on balance volume is very weak. Rental strength is started to weaken, but still pretty good. And the 9 is still way over the 14. But I'm concerned that it didn't show the kind of leadership that I wanted, which said that the financials, S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, should have gone a lot higher, should have gone and held in the 34s instead of not getting to 34 and now pulling back to 33.02. That includes KRE. <clears throat> Trading at uh, 41.94. I just wanted to check something here. You see, uh, I tightened the stop so that we still make a profit. We are no more long. And one of the reasons is because of this cluster formation, this should become an, a cup so that the next move would be above the higher Friday. And the way it was acting, I thought to myself, if it takes out the low of Thursday and that low on KRE, which is the S&P Regional Banking ETF, is at 42.47, we could go quite a bit lower if this market is ready for some kind of a digestive phase. So I, I, I tightened the stop, so we made a little bit of money. But we're out, and I'll have to wait again, and I'll have to wait for the XLF, and I'll have to wait because Bank of America was what we normally get into every year for the last seven years or so, but for the last six or eight months or more maybe, we haven't gone into that. I just do not like the way it's acting, and that's part of this whole thing that I was trying to uh, impart to my subscribers over the weekend in, in my overview video, is that this is a market that favors – some sectors, and we we took a stock the other day that was out of the ordinary. It was it was a non-GMO uh, food company. I thought, let's see if this can go under the under the radar, have a decent rally, and or at least hold steady, and show me that we've got a, a rotational market in that other sectors are starting to work rather than just the uh, artificial intelligence and the tax sector. It didn't work out. So that said to me, hey, the financials haven't been acting very well. Just be a little careful here. So we can come back, but I'm out. Um, I just don't like this. Now, I, I, I'm going to mention bots, which is something we're talking about. And as I said, it's getting very overboard. We are lucky to get almost at the exact top of, of we've got We've taken a little bit off. We've got a, we've got a position. We've taken a little bit off. I wanted a bigger position, so we, now we have to wait. We've taken really good gains. I I'm just look at leg E in the weekly chart. A beautiful. I don't want to spend time on this now. Cup formation. 
It breaks out, doubles to the upside. I, I like everything about it, but it's overbought. There's no question. Global X Robotics and AI ETF will get will add back. We've already we have holding the core position, but we will get back uh, the the parts that we took off plus the second position at some point. I like the sector, but I think right now it's telling us that it is extremely overbought. All right. So with that said, we've taken profits in a lot of things. We've raised our cash position. Uh, I'm even looking at this. Do you remember I spoke about the DBA, which is in leg C. That's another reason why I said we could see some kind of a rotation here and then sudden spikes to the upside, maybe not taking out the highs, but you've got this DBA agricultural fund looking like it wants to get to a leg D. The high on Friday was 22.07, was it? No, 22 round. Oh, I didn't even realize 22 round number high. Today's high is 21.99. So, so far, this is going to look like it could make a peak C, but then we expect a peak D. And that's all those grains. Look, the grains did fantastically. Yes, um, wheat, dust wheat, a leg C pulls back today, but it's still close to the high of Friday. That's the same as the DBA. Look at soybeans, continuous contract, extended higher, leg B. Look at uh, corn. Extended higher leg D. So all of these are suggesting, and this is the this is the part that I think the Fed has to really be concerned about. All of this is suggesting that that whole rotation between crude oil pulling back. Look at this, yes, crude oil down a dollar seventy one at seventy point twenty one. It's not been going anywhere. I've spoken. Everybody kept saying crude oil, oh, going up to the nineties. As someone said, I heard someone say, right back to the highs of earlier. Uh, earlier this uh, 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 last year, uh, I, you know, I said they could be right. I just don't see it in the chart. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't see it. And you can see it's stuck in a trading range. At some point, if crude oil is trading at 78, I'll have a completely different opinion, I'm sure. But at this particular point, you've got deflation in this whole sector that's so important, which is the crude oil. You've got deflation. If you're looking at high-grade copper, Hybrid copper pulling back a tad at 3.86 on the continuous contract. But look at the weekly and monthly chart, lower lows and lower highs. Look at wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Made an alternate count, E slash B the other day, uh, under the 200 period moving average. But look at the weekly. It's just in a sideways range. This is timber and forestry worldwide ETF. So that says to me, aha, but nobody was looking to see grains suddenly move up so sharply. So that's the DBA. And that says, so here we have some deflationary aspects in the commodities. That's oil. That's gold. Let me just go back to gold. Uh, can I do that? Yes, gold. Look at that. Now down 27. And yet, think about wheat. These are important. Soybean. I mean, this is so important. Let's see what live cattle is doing. Live cattle. I uh, made a peak D now it's stalling. Yeah, so I'm looking at a rotation through the inflationary part. I'll be back. Dow's down 225. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Oh, so let me just go through a couple of things that I was asked about. So the uh, Triple M, Triple M traded down to the 92s about three weeks or so ago, had a big gap up spike and has not filled that gap at all. In fact, it's made a higher high. It's down today, down three at 101.50. And this just speaks to a couple of things. First of all, let me explain what I want you to do is coincidentally, um, having been asked about this, it's just purely coincidental that I'm also going to use this as an example. So in the Chapman wave, you see, we're coming down here. This is a trough E, and as soon as it rallies, it still remains a trough E. <clears throat> but the moment that this low of the week of 24th of March at 105.48 is taken out, you've got to be real careful um, in, in naming this because that becomes a leg F to the downside. I also like to have a look back because if there was a Chapman Wave incident restart on the downside, you could have an alternate count. This would become E slash B, A, and this becomes F slash B. But in the meantime, look what happened. It makes a low at 92.38, the week of the 2nd of uh, June. This is a weekly chart. Have a look at this. You see this huge spike, and you see that I cannot put a leg A here. Why cannot I not put a leg A here? Because I have to wait. I don't know that that's the low bar. I can only start the count after a trough is made. So if there is a, the next day, if the low is not 92.38, but 92.39, that becomes a trough, even though it's one penny. I can start the wave count. So this is wrong. In fact, let me do this because this is a good example. This is not right. This is not a leg A because I can only start the count after I've made the trough. That's a leg A because it's after the trough over there. This is now a brand new A, weekly A, over there. So, okay, that's number one. Number two is, I remember, I think it was Sue that called a long time ago. I was looking at a Triple M, and I said, you know, I I don't like the action of Triple M. I'd, I'd be real careful. I think it was, now where was, I should have made a note where it was. I think it was, was it in the last, was it May? Yeah, I, I, maybe it was somewhere over there. Anyway, it was in the 104, 105 area. And I said, just be real careful. And then I made a peak C1, C2. The implication is that it didn't go by one penny higher than uh, peak C. It stalled just under it. In other words, it went to 190. Oh, it's 190. It's a little hard to see. 107.30, the week of the 18th of uh, April. 
Uh, there we are, 107.30. And then the week of the 25th of April, it goes to 107.30. Down an exact, if it went one penny higher, that would have been a leg D. So because it did that, and the MACD was still good, and there was a little bump in the stochastic and the on-balance volume, I said we can call that a peak C2, and then I put a red plus sign above it to say it's going to act exactly like a down arrow, but there could be another rally to even go to a peak C3 or even a D. But be ready that this could turn down, and it could be quite sharp. Well, of course, it did turn down. did make that double top. It went to 103 point. I said 103. 105 point what? 83? No, wait a minute. Oh, 107.30. Then it went to 106.83. There you are. So that's like a C2. I didn't put that in. I'm going to put that in right now just to show you how the Chapman wave works. If there's a methodology that needs to be repeated over and over because um, you don't want to break rules. The whole idea of methodology is to stick to the rule. This is a rule that was broken on the whole idea of peak Ds a long, long time. I'm talking about when I used to do hand charting still, so the early, certainly the early 80s. Um, so the rule of thumb being that this acts like a double top. Do the measure, the vertical measure, and see if it's weakening. And, of course, it was. You can go down a lot deeper. Well, lo and behold, we went down to the low of 92.38. That was the week of the 1st of June. Then there was a big spike. And this is just telling me that there are, in the, and, and triple M is a cyclical, uh, 3M is called. Uh, it is in, in the... In the area, it isn't a heavy duty like a, like steel or anything, but it's like I would consider it to be in the uh, in the area of cyclicals. So this to me, I normally I would draw a rectangle like this, right there, right there, rectangle, and say this could climb even in a shorter time span. This is a daily chart to a leg D. Sometimes it does it in the exact same time so in the daily chart. Well, this didn't. This just went A and then stalled. And the idea is it can go after that flagpole turned down. If it's making higher highs and higher lows, it can go just under, right on, or just above the previous high. Then you've got to be careful because if it breaks and closes below a halfway point of this re long rectangle formation, there would be a 101. Let's call it a 101. Let's call it 101 right now. That says it could go all the way back down to this low right here, and that's the low of 97.29, the week of the 6th of June. But look what happened. This high was on the 2nd of, this is a daily chart, 2nd of June was 104.55. The high on Friday was what? 104.89. Just barely above, and now it's pulling back. So I'm just going to suggest, I think that Triple M is attempting now to form some kind of a base to participate in any rally later this year, which I think is going to happen uh, sometime this summer. We could get the next phase to the upside. But at the same time, just be a little careful. So if you've been long anywhere from under, say, 98, I'd say I, I'd put that in the that's good category. If it gets it closes under 98, I'd say, hey, you know what? Just if you had a stop in and you're prepared to hold that stop of two points, say, I'd keep that. But... Under 108 makes me a little nervous because it says it's giving up everything that it's gained. This is a good sign that it's rallied, um, but it's also a sign that says, look at the weekly. The weekly nine period moving average is way under the 14. It is improving. The MACD is improving. The stochastic is improving. The unbalanced volume is not. And that just says, could be choppy. Be careful. But that monthly chart is just horrendous. So I, I suspect that in 2023, this year sometime, you will see triple M in the 114s, maybe even higher. 116 is the 118 is the 200 period. No, sorry. <clears throat> 118 is the black 14 period moving average of the monthly chart. But that's 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 it. Next question came in about oh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? CSX, huh? CSX. I haven't looked at that for a little while. CSX, very nice rally, huh? Look at that. So it didn't take out the starting point here for the buy signal to buy mode, which went to a D when it pulled back. So the starting point was 30, 
29.93. It runs all the way to a peak D, second peak D in about three or four, three or four weeks, and it goes to 33.07 on the 22nd of May. Pulls back, didn't take that out. So I have no choice, but, and remember, I can't use the low bar. Let me just double check. Uh, Okay, that makes the low cannot be the high as well, except in the instant restart at PD. So this is an A, right here, A, B, and we got to a C. Is that an alternative count? He says C. Could be. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down three or six. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, in the YouTube, uh, Willie really asked if I could uh, look at VGZ. You know, I, you've traded it for 10 years. All I can say is you're the expert. I have, it doesn't look great to me. But at 0.53, I can see it pulling back to the 0.45 level. Um, and then I think it needs to rally. But the, the monthly chart is starting to improve enough that I can say possibly by late July, maybe August, I think it could be retesting the 0.70s uh, to the 0.80s. If uh, this, if it doesn't close below 4, 0.45, that's if it closes under 45, 0.45, it's a problem. Now, you, 
I think you have the best. You've traded for ten years. You're definitely the best person to to pick out. I'm sure you'll be able to pick out a bottom. Is this the bottom? No, I think it's trying to establish some kind of a bottom. It's not there yet. So a couple of things. Let me just review. Uh, so the Dow is actually down sharper than I would have liked to have seen. Down 340. If it was together with the S&P down 56 instead of down 37, I say okay. We are in a process now that's going to make it really hard to rally. But I think that there are just enough areas of uh, support that say we can have a sudden spike to the upside. I don't think we're going to take out the 34,588 high in the, in the Dow. Uh, we have now got no trading position in the S um, in the UDOW three times long we've taken our profits now we're sitting on the side for that position we've still got a core position from October and I I, I, I just I pondered this all weekend should I start a position in the short side and I, I didn't I said that but I, but I am this is a pretty top phase and the 9 over the 14 before the average just says no fool, there could still be some precious up spikes. Don't have to take out the high up spikes, but we are starting the rolling over process. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Everybody's back in town. Stay tuned. Great programming coming up. Steve is back. Ooh.